In this video we are going to look at using Timeline and Cinemachine together to create animated sequences. We will look at different ways to work with shots and animations, how to activate and deactivate cutscenes, how to use camera events during an animation sequence and how to create depth of field blurs. In the previous video we covered the basics of Cinemachine and the types of cameras you can use. If you are new to Cinemachine and haven't watched that video yet, check it out using the link from the video description below. If you want to follow along with this video, you can download the Unity Japan Office HDRP asset for free from the Unity Asset Store, and ensure that Cinemachine version 3.1 or later is installed from the package manager in the Unity registry. I am using the Evening B scene. Add a camera and tag it as main camera. Enable HDRP dynamic resolution for higher visual fidelity. Set anti-aliasing from the post anti-aliasing drop-down to improve the image quality. Add two Cinemachine cameras and align to the scene view. One is looking at this conference table, the other is looking at this TV and chairs. Go to Window, Sequencing and Timeline and dock the window next to the console. Create an empty game object to store the playable director for the timeline. With the empty game object selected, create a new playable asset. This then adds the playable director that controls the playback of the timeline animated sequence. Click the plus button to add tracks. There are a range to choose from, but we want to select a Cinemachine track. Drag the Unity camera with the Cinemachine brain into the slot. Note the timeline is now in control of the Cinemachine brain. Now we can drag the first Cinemachine camera onto the track. It is shown as a clip using a default length of 5 seconds. When I drag this to the left, notice the scene changes. The clips on the timeline are now controlling which Cinemachine camera should be active. Drag the second Cinemachine camera onto the track. When placed together like this, it creates a direct cut between the two cameras. Timeline overrides the default blend mode of the Cinemachine brain. To create a blend, drag the second clip over the first, creating an overlap. Now we have a blend between the two cameras. The duration of the blend is defined by the amount of overlap between the two clips. The default blend mode is set by a curve. Set to manual to override this. By default, this is an ease in and out curve. You can set it to another preset or create your own curve. Cinemachine cameras can be either static non-moving cameras or procedural moving cameras. Timeline works with all Cinemachine cameras. If I track this chair for the first Cinemachine camera and set the rotation control to use a rotation composer, then for the second Cinemachine camera track this TV, once again with a rotation composer. Now the blend is based on the look at targets, which gives a different result. Instead of animating camera movement, Cinemachine allows you to place multiple cameras in different positions and blend between them to create movement. This can be used to create any type of camera shot, such as pan, tilt, crane, zoom, etc. I have five cameras in different positions and I want each of them to be four seconds long with a 1.5 second blend between each. You can use the clip timing section to get exact results, setting duration to four and setting the start time to overlap exactly 1.5 seconds with the last clip. The sequence now plays each clip with the same duration and blend time. For a smoother movement, add a dolly camera with spline. Go into spline edit mode. Ensure to select knot 1, as this is the end knot. Move this to where the shot should end. Click the add knot button to add an extra knot and press escape to finish editing. Add another knot and press escape. Now this can be dragged to define a curve. Add another knot and continue to define the path you want the camera to follow. Knots can also be moved up on the y-axis to force the camera up into the air. For the Cinemachine camera I will set this TV as the tracking target and raise the y-spline offset. The Cinemachine camera can now be added to the timeline. I will set the camera rotation to follow target. 
For smooth movement, enable automatic dolly and set the fixed speed to about 0.08. If you add damping greater than zero, this will slow down the speed it takes to travel along the spline. During play mode, it creates a smooth movement, always looking at the TV on the wall. The dolly movement can also be animated. Switch off the automatic dolly. From the position drop-down, you can move the camera based on distance, normalized, or not. Distance allows you to set a distance from the first knot. This might be useful if you want exact distances along the spline. Normalized makes the value from start to finish of the spline 0 to 1, with 0 being at the beginning of the spline and 1 at the end of the spline. Knot allows you to move the camera along the spline to each knot. This value changes depending on how many knots you have on the spline. I will choose knot. That way I can move the camera to each knot over a set amount of time. Add an animation track and drag in the Cinemachine camera. Press record and set the first position keyframe. I'll do this by typing 1 and then 0 again to set it. Now at about 1.5 seconds I'll move to knot 1. Then at 3 seconds to knot 2 etc. When complete I can see the results during play mode. Notice this is a lot faster than last time. One of the advantages of animating the position, you can now control the duration of each keyframe. I can move some of them in the animator window and vary the speed along the spline. So I can go from fast movement to slow. Timeline sequences can be enabled or disabled like any other game object. You can use this to play animated sequences at specific points in your project. For example, if you have a player with a Cinemachine camera following them, this can trigger the cinematic cutscene. I have added the player camera. I have created a new tag called Play and set the tag of this Cinemachine camera to Play. It will also need a box collider set to a trigger. This will trigger the beginning of the cinematic when colliding with a trigger object. Switch off the Timeline 1 object. The start trigger object is just an empty game object with a box collider set to a trigger. It also needs a rigid body component set to kinematic. This is to handle the collision physics. This is placed near the beginning of the spline. Add a Cinemachine trigger action component. You can select which layer the trigger will be on, in this case the default layer. Check with tag to set the play tag of the player camera. This will be an on object enter action. From the drop down, you can choose event only if you want to access a function in the script or various preset actions. I want to activate the timeline. Drag the timeline one object into the slot. I have also placed a trigger end object at the end of the spline with an object enter that deactivates the timeline one, switching it off when it reaches the end. Now in play mode, as the player camera moves forward, it triggers the timeline animation. When it is finished, it returns to the player camera. Did you notice how the start of the timeline sequence was very abrupt? You can blend into a timeline sequence, just like you can blend between cameras. On the camera clip on the Cinemachine track, set a value in the ease in duration to blend into the timeline sequence. You can also set an ease out duration value if you want to blend out of the timeline to the player camera. Now the timeline sequence blends nicely into the sequence. If you want to change the speed of the keyframes, you can right click on this track and choose Convert to Clip Track. Now the keyframes are stored in an animation clip. You can still access the keyframes by double clicking on it. Use the speed multiplier to slow down or speed up the track. I will speed it up, setting this to 1.5. Now I can adjust the camera clip to the same duration. We can also add cutaway shots. A cutaway shot is when another camera shot is displayed in the middle of an original shot. Here I have created a new Cinemachine camera looking into these office spaces. In the timeline, create a new Cinemachine track. Drag the new camera onto the new track. Tracks that appear further down the list override tracks that are further up the list. So this new Cinemachine track will override the older Cinemachine track. This allows a cutaway shot even during the dolly spline shot. 
You can also blend between cameras on separates and the machine tracks. Type a value in the ease in duration to blend into this shot and the value in the ease out duration to blend out of the shot. You can add a first person feel to the camera by adding procedural noise. This will give the impression of a first person character walking. Click on the Cinemachine camera and from the noise drop down add a basic multi channel purling. There are a variety of presets you can choose that fit different situations, but we will create a new noise setting. Double click to open the asset. We can now add amplitudes to the position Y axis. Add an entry. Frequency is how often this will repeat. Amplitude is how strong the motion will be. I am setting this very low as the motion should be quite subtle. When the checkbox is checked you have a non-random wave with exact results based on the values. I'll also add rotation noise on the X axis. I am using the same frequency, however you can vary the frequency for more interesting results. The amplitude is a bit higher at 0.1 and the checkbox checked. Do the same for the rotation Z. During play mode we get a subtle walking effect on the camera. The scene is used in post processing to add various effects. These are found in the volume settings. There are different profiles for different areas. If we switch off the global profile you see the before and after effects. Click on the volume profile asset to find it in the project window. I want to create a new profile to change the look of the camera to that of a CCTV camera. Duplicate this profile asset with Ctrl and D or edit and duplicate. First I'll change the exposure from automatic to a fixed value of 6.5 to darken the scene. To see the results in the game view drag the duplicated profile into the profile slot of the global object. I'll reduce the temperature of the white balance to give it a cold tint. Click Add Override and from Post Processing add Colour Adjustments. I'll reduce the contrast and saturation to grey out the image. Then add an override of film grain from Post Processing. I'll set the type to Medium 2 and set the intensity to 0.324 to give it that CCTV film noise quality. Right click on the asset to rename to CCTV. Then replace the original post profile asset into the global profile slot. I have created three Cinemachine cameras for cutaway shots. First I have a script with two functions to swap the global volume profiles. Go to the first of the new Cinemachine cutaway cameras. Add a Cinemachine camera events component. From here we can call script functions when the camera is activated or deactivated or at the start or end of a blend. Drag this camera into the event target. Add the change profile script and drag in the global object with the global profile attached. Then drag in the original and CCTV profiles. Add a slot in the camera activated event. The script is on this camera so drag that into the slot. Choose Change to CCTV from Function drop-down. Do the same for the last of the cutaway cameras, but select Change to Original from the Function drop-down. During play mode it starts in colour, but changes to black and white for the cutaways, then back to colour. This was to demonstrate how to use Cinemachine camera events. You can of course call any script actions you like. There is a much easier way to activate post-processing profiles for different Cinemachine cameras. Attach a Cinemachine volume settings extension. This now allows you to attach a post-processing profile in the profile slot. This will override the global profile while this camera is active. It even blends between profiles if the clip has ease in and out durations to blend between Cinemachine cameras. Another post processing effect we can achieve is a depth of field blur. I have created a new Cinemachine camera looking at this conference table. It allows me to access only some parts of the Unity camera, but I want access to the aperture and focus distance to create a depth of field effect. 
on the Unity camera in the Cinemachine Brain, check the Lens Mode Override. Set it to a physical camera. Note, this is currently only available for HDRP cameras. Now in the Cinemachine camera, I have more options. To add a depth of field, it must be added to the post-processing profile. Click Override, Post-Processing and Depth of Field. Set it to a physical camera. Set the focus mode to camera, so now the camera will be controlling the depth of field effect. Add an extension to the Cinemachine camera of Cinemachine Volume Settings. There are a range of focus tracking options. We will choose camera to begin with. This can be used when you want the entire image to be blurred. Drag in the current global profile. Set the focus distance on the Cinemachine camera to about 1. Then, just like in a real camera, the aperture size defines the sharpness. Now we can adjust the focus offset to blur the background, or bring it back into focus. This can be animated in timeline. We sometimes see shots that change focus from a foreground object to a background object. Here I have a Cinemachine camera using custom target tracking, looking at this chair. The focus offset has blurred the background but kept the chair in focus. On the timeline, I'll animate the Cinemachine camera component using the focus offset. Set in initial keyframes, and then adjusting the focus offset to blur the chair and bring the background into focus. We can now see this in the play preview. Storyboard images are sometimes used to plan out shots on paper. These can be used to help set up your Cinemachine shots. You will notice when you create a new Cinemachine camera after the blur effect, the aperture will need to be set higher to sharpen the image. And set focus distance to a default value of 10. Add an extension of Cinemachine Storyboard. I created a storyboard image which I can drag into the show image slot and reduce the alpha to see the camera shot behind. Now I can use this to help line up my camera shot. Once done you can adjust the alpha to see the difference. Or you can drag the split view to compare the image against your shot. Once you have it set up you can either deactivate or remove the component. And that brings us to the end of this video. So we have looked at various things you can do when working with Cinemachine alongside Timeline. In the next video we're going to look at 2D Cinemachine cameras for 2D games. For more information see the Unity documentation. Thanks for watching.